killed worldwide in the coronavirus pandemic has now passed 250,000. This banner reminds residents of the Para Pedro favela in Rio de Janeiro to stay home. But not working and staying home means going hungry. Let's Many have now at uh, the latest pandemic developments around the world. More than 3.8 million people have been infected with the coronavirus globally, and nearly 270,000 have died. Coronavirus has now claimed more than 76,000 lives here in the U.S. Joining us now is Dr. Despite Oscar Dino, chairman of the Philippine Medical Association's Commission on Legislation. Time is short. What is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. If I told, if someone had told me when I was 20 years old that life was very short and would pass just like that, I wouldn't have believed it. And if I tell you that, you don't believe it either. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee, yes I will help thee, yes I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You know, going through life, I've realized that my breakthrough was brought out through the moments that tested me severely. My faith grew in the moments that tried to make me feel I was less. And through my rough times, I realized that my strength was from God who brought me up when it felt as if I was falling. You know, the Bible says in John 16, 33, these things have I spoken unto you that in me, ye might have peace. And let me tell you something about Jesus. Jesus is peace For it says he is a prince of peace So in order to look for peace In order to look for strength In order to look for clarity Through rough times, through troubled times Through pain, through suffering, through sickness Through disease, through trials and tribulations Always look to Jesus Who is the provider and the comforter Through what you are facing So have your eyes on him because when you have your eyes focused on Jesus, you will realize that in the midst of the storm, he was always there. You know, the second part of John 16, 33 says, In the world, ye shall have trouble. Ye shall have tribulation. You know, the Bible says, he said to himself, Jesus said to himself, In this world, you will have trouble. But the next part says, But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Which shows that what you're going through Jesus overcame it. He's been through it. And not only been through, but he's conquered as well. So as Jesus overcame, you must overcome. And the only way that you can overcome is through him. So know that even though the things you're going through may feel big, it's never too big for God. So you have to know who God is. And you have to know that if the things of God last forever, then you don't have to worry about these painful things that are temporary. You know, the Bible says in Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things, all things through Christ that strengthens me. And know that nothing is counted out in the word all, which means that anything and everything, no matter big or no matter small, is possible through him. That's why I also love Matthew 19.26 when it says, With men it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. So why rely on your own strength? That is not even guaranteed to be strong enough. Put your strength in the Lord, who is your hope and your confidence, because mighty is the man that have faith in the mighty works of God, for God's strength can never go away. So don't put any limits on our limitless God. For as it says in Ephesians 3, 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask and think according to the power that worketh in us. And that power is from God that continues to work in us. So while we think we feel that we are on this stage of life, looking at everything by ourselves, know that God is in the back of the stage, controlling and working everything. So never worry, but lift up your hands and know that God is worthy. So you can't give up on yourself because you came too far. God has brought you too far just to give up now. And you will only go even farther as long as you're willing to keep on moving ahead even when all signs tell you to stop. You know, you can't run a race with weights because you will be slowed down and you will be more likely to fall. But if you're willing to take off your weight, if you're willing to run with endurance ahead, you will finish the race strong. 
So with that being said, you have to lay aside sins. You have to lay aside cares and worry and weights to God. And your endurance represents your faith and trust in Him. See, so don't let your hearts be troubled. And the more that you build up your endurance to keep running and trusting in God, you will still finish and look back and say, thank you. Thank you, God, because you have never let me go. You know, his, he always has his eyes on you. His eyes is very keen and it delights to you. And he hasn't forgotten you. So as it says in Hebrews 12, 1, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So keep running. Because the place that you're running to is a place that is worth not giving up on. Let me encourage you by saying this. What you're going through is nothing compared to where God is taking you. Your pain can't compare to the healing that God brings. Your suffering can't compare to the peace that God has. And your sorrow can't compare to the smile that he will put on your face. So even though what you're going through may not feel good now, you will realize that it was good for you in the end. This chapter of your life may be filled with so much pain and so much suffering for you. But know that your next chapter can be the greatest chapter of your life. But you have to be willing to keep flipping that page. And as you flip that page, and as you keep flipping and pick, flipping, know that it's something worth rejoicing in. Because God has already written the book of your life. It will not lead your hope to be discouraged, but it will lead your hope to be encouraged and to continue to trust in Him. He is not finished with you yet. And this is not the end. For what it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you the expected end. So just know that what you see now is not your finished product. I know that in life we have weak points. And that's okay. Because there's good news in that. In the midst of the bad. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So know that strength is built from weakness. That's why we wouldn't know how to be strong if we truly didn't know how to feel weak. We wouldn't be truly feel his grace. We wouldn't truly feel his love and his mercy if we first didn't feel weak and go towards him. So all this time you may have felt as if your weakness was a curse, but in all reality it was a blessing for God to make room for your life. So you don't have to use your hurt to give up, but you can use your hurt to keep on going. And to know that God's got you. So there's three points I want you guys to take note of. Three notes and I, and I pray that these notes can encourage and bring hope to someone out there. The first note I want you to write is Jesus is hope that shines through dark times. Don't grieve as if you have no hope because you believe in Jesus who keeps your hope alive. And with that hope, it will bring out strength needed to keep on going and to have your eyes on what's above and not below. So we can say Psalms 130, and five with the smile when it says, I wait for the Lord, my soul do with wait, and his in his word do I hope. The second note I want you guys to put is God's love will never run out. It continues to flow, it never stops. You know, I think about what it says in Isaiah 54 and 10 when it reads, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills will be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord. His love will never leave you. He, he will never forsake you. For his love will keep you, it will help you, it will comfort you, and to sustain you through troubled times. You know, love always has a tendency to bring out the best and not the worst. You know, you are in his loving hands. And if you are in his hands, if you are in God's hands, what can take you away? The last note I want you guys to take is Jesus will set you free. So know that these chains in your life will soon break. I feel a lot of us feel that since we, we come up against things like pain, the past, things that are coming up against us, we feel that we are a hostage of these things and it will never be set free and never let go. But what if I told you this? What if I told you God has a stronger hold on you than these things that have a weak hold on you? And it's not a hold to bring you down. It's not a hold to tear you down, but it's a hold that is filled with so much beauty and strength. A hold that will keep you from falling and a hold that will last forever with goodness and mercy. 
That's why I love Romans 8.31 when it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And the answer is nothing. Nothing can come against the Lord who is strength, lasts forever. So if you didn't take anything away from this message, I just want you to know this. The Lord will forever be your strength. Psalms 91 says, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. God loves you. He loves you so much. You know, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but will have everlasting life. You know, God loves you. He will never let you go. So through these trials and tribulations, know that your strength is from Him. So you can trust in them always and never let go.